Hey everybody, Gia Mora back again with A. Laura Brody hey. and Dreams by Machine. On your website, mm -hmm. uh, dreamsbymachine.com, it says remake, redo, remode. Yes. Tell me what that means. Well, it's actually a takeoff in the 1940s series of remake, redo, reuse. It was sort of a catchphrase that they developed during the rationing period of mm -hmm. World War II. That in turn came from the Depression and people really having to make use of everything that they had. But in the 40s, it became this idea of patriotic duty, mm -hmm. but also a sense of pride, of remaking things out of what you had available. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this maybe came from me growing up in Alaska, where really it was a point of pride to make things out of what you had available. If you didn't have to buy it new, you don't do it. Mm. But the idea of remaking something and giving it new life really speaks to me. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've talked before about mm. how sort of this modern life of ours where we can just go buy anything, you know, from your food to your clothes to uh, anything else in between, right? Pretty we much. don't know where where the meal came from, you're like, oh, look at this beautiful salad that I poured out of a bag. <laughs> exactly. When almost anything comes out of packaging, you really stop having a sense of the process and you have no sense of where anything comes from any longer. Sure, maybe it's convenient. Sure, maybe it's easy. But somehow all of it is removed from you. You actually lose a certain amount of power, you know? We're very literal creatures as people. We believe what our hands and our brains tell us. So if you have given away all of the things that you make and you eat and you wear to somebody else to do, it's almost like they just happened out of thin air, but also you kind of believe you can't do them. Mm. You can't make them. Once you start making things yourself, I know it's a little far flung, but really, you make things yourself, you're retraining your brain. Right. You're saying, I can do this, I have visual proof of me having made this. Maybe, just maybe, I, there's a lot of other things that I thought I couldn't do that I could do now. I love that. You know, it's, it's a really, really simple way of, I don't know, training you how to problem solve, but training you that you are capable. Right, right. And there's also sort of a, a darker history to all of that Ugh. manufacturing, right? Whether it be industrial farming or, yes. you know, even all the way to textiles. So you told me this amazing story about the Triangle Shirtwaist <laughs> Fire. So would you please share that with all okay. of us? Because this, to me, this speaks to your entire background of it how really you came does. into this. Yeah. And some of this is, you know, this is the family legend thing. But my great-grandmother Pauline called in sick the day that the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory caught fire, because she said, this is a sucky place to work. <laughs> so she was out. She and my great-grandfather started one of the first socialist colonies in upstate New York. It's kind of been in the family yeah. for a while. Yeah. But the history of textiles is the history of industry. But it's also the history of abuse, and it's the history of damage to the environment and damage to people and slavery. I mean, there's some horrifying stories from the 1400s dye trade in Flanders. Sure. And you can see that up to today in things like the collapse of the factory in Bangladesh with right. the, no, it's not from H&M garments coming out from under the bodies. Not to get ugly here, but there's a long history of abuse. Making fabric is rough on the environment, and it's rough on land, and it's rough on people. We have a lot of fabric out there. There's enough fabric and clothing out there right now for us probably to dress every last one of us in the United States for at least the next 20 years wow. without making another thing. Wow. So why not make use of the stuff that we have already available? Right. That's really what a lot of the staple draping and the remake, redo, remode. Remode yourself, remode your clothing, remode everything you Re have. Remode your thinking. Remode. I love it. Now yeah. the vest that we made, we made out of a, a, a sheet. A sheet, that's right. Sheets are great. Actually, the uh, basic flat ones are a lot easier than most of the fitted ones. Sure. Although you can use Just those too. Trim off those little yeah. tricky trim off the edges. Elastic. The ones I can't fold properly, those yeah. ones. Who needs them? <laughs> That's why you cut them off. That's right. But you can get that sometimes from the back of the closet. Right. Uh, you can get them from yard sales, from thrift stores, and it's a really inexpensive way to get started. The other benefit I found, a lot of people are intimidated by the idea of making something themselves. 
oh my God, I'm going to screw it up. I'm going to ruin something and it's going to be so expensive. It's an old sheet. Right. You're good. Right. You're set. You don't have to worry about it. Right. And it just takes that stressor right out of the picture. Yeah. And it lets you have fun with it because let's face it, dressing up used to be fun. Yeah. That's why you want it. Play. Used to be, yeah. You know, let's play dress up, right? Exactly. This is supposed to be a game and you can use it for serious. Sure. So why not? So I might take an old sheet mm -hmm. and, and make up uh, my staple draping. Mm -hmm. True my line. Yes. Uh, then I might go and take, a, let's say, a really cool drape or something yes. that I might have found at the thrift store. Or a, um, not that I would be crazy enough to do this, but a piece of lace. You know, something Actually, like that. You know? one of the things that I've done from the remade thing, take a sheer drapery and you can do a lace drapery over it. Mm. Put them together and make a spectacular coat. I bet you can. But yes, you can make just about anything. Lace itself, if you're going to get very, very fancy, expensive stuff, sure, that's going to be intimidating. Sure. But if you've already done the pattern on a sheet, you're not going to care so much. You already got the shape out. Then you can do the stuff that's $800 a yard. <laughs> and just add a, yeah. I, I have champagne tastes on a beer budget on fabric <laughs> all the time. But you can really find beautiful pieces if you know what thrift stores to look in. Sure. And for me, it's like hunting for buried treasure, yeah. right? Yeah. You can always find something awesome. And speaking of buried treasure, mm -hmm. it seems like there's very few tools to your staple draping. Very little. Really. Um, even in a world where I use a lot of industrial machinery, basic home machine is really the only power tool I'm mm. using. Sure, you could use power staplers, but that's dangerous. Um, hand ka stapler, ka-chunk. <laughs> hand stapler, staples, maybe a staple remover, scissors, pens, and a person. Perfect. It's simple. Yeah, and I think even later in this video series, we're even going to teach you how to make a really cool uh, holster mm -hmm. for your scissors. Which is awesome. You don't have to have it, but everyone wants a little superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your philosophy with us today. Thank you. I'm glad you sat through it. I know not everyone wants philosophy, oh. but sometimes it's good to know what's behind it, right? Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank thanks you. again. A. Laura Brody, DreamsByMachine.com. We'll thanks see you so in the much. next video. Mm -hmm. Bye.